Hey guys, thought I was done making videos for tonight, then I remembered, oh right Sam, you wanted to review this book. So, um, this book, since with the glare of the light you can't really see the cover, and the cover is basically invisible, this is Uglies by Scott Westerfield, which obviously you would know because that's what's going to be in the title. But anyway, um, Uglies is part of a series, this is the first book. Um, and it's a futuristic uh, story about a society where, like, basically the world is built until th these little, like, technologically, like, advanced, like, amazing super cities, basically. And what this society of the future does to uh, promote equality, to stop war, to st like just keep the, the world peace, is that when citizens turn 16 years old, they give them all basically intense plastic surgery where they just completely change their entire bodies. And you can basically give them suggestions on what you want, but they just basically do whatever they want to you. And because of that, they've taken out different um, prejudices people have against each other. Racism no longer exists because everybody's the same. Um, I don't know, there's discrimination, things like that, they don't exist anymore in this futuristic society, which is, you know, great, awesome, but um, not. See, okay, so the main character of this book is called Tally Youngblood. Really cheesy name, just saying, just throwing up throwing that out there. Anyway, and she's about to turn 16 and at the beginning of the story she's really depressed because she had a friend whose name is Paris and Paris is a guy. Again, a really weird name for a guy. Even for a girl, that's a weird name. But anyway, um, she's really depressed because her friend was older than her and got to have the intense surgery before she did, and basically what happens is they separate the people. So when after you've had the surgery, you don't hang out with the people who haven't, or the people that are younger than you anymore. In fact, they ship you off to a new side of the city, and make it so like if you're younger than that person, or basically ugly, in comparison with the pretty, which is what they call people who've had the um, surgery is you're a new pretty when you first get it. Um, if you're an ugly and you try to go into new pretty town, that's against the rules and it's not allowed, but people don't really follow the rules in this society. Anyway, um, or at least uglies don't. Um, so she misses her friend because they're like a few months apart or something. So at the beginning of the story, she sneaks out of Uglyville or whatever it is and basically they have these like tracker rings and basically their entire life is in this ring and it, they have like an email in there and a tracker in there and like all this stuff so she takes it off and she leaves in her room she sneaks out she gets across the only bridge in the society that still exists that's not like electronic it's such a normal bridge goes across it goes into New Pretty Town you think they would have put security there Anyway, she goes into New Pretty Town, she tries to meet her friend, and then her friend just kind of is different, and she can't put her finger on why. She just thinks, oh, you know, he's pretty now, he's growing up, or whatever. So, on her way back from New Pretty Town, the, in the meantime, she sets off lots of alarms, and like makes people go crazy, thinking like, oh my gosh, there's an ugly in New Pretty Town, ah, worst thing that could possibly happen. And she meets another person who snuck across to New Pretty Town, who's an ugly, and her name is Shay. Kind of another weird name. I don't know, they have weird names in the future. Anyway, so Shay and Tally become best friends, and they realize they have the same birthday. So there will never be a point where they will have to be separated, because if they both have this surgery to become pretty, they'll both go through it at the same time and then they'll both be done at the same time so yay so what happens is t um, Shay teaches Tally a bunch of stuff like how to hoverboard which is like this thing they have which is basically like a surfboard but like 
you travel over like magnetic waves and um, they become really close but the one thing Tally notices is that Shay doesn't like talks about becoming pretty with like disdain and like you know she actually doesn't tries to not talk about it and while Tally's really excited about the surgery Shay just doesn't tries to like it's like a touchy subject for her so you come to realize later that Shay actually does not want to become a pretty and she likes the way she is and she d like ta uh, Tally has this mentality of I'm hideous and this is why like her eyes are too far apart or she's too you know this or too that because she's just been brainwashed into thinking that she couldn't possibly be pretty. She couldn't possibly be attractive. She's ugly. So she doesn't understand why she doesn't want the surgery. What's wrong with being beautiful, right? So what happens is Shay tells her about this group of people who've run away from society and live in the wilderness and they live like quote unquote rusties, which is us basically how we live. And that just she's just like, What? That doesn't how is that possible? So she thinks Shay's crazy, basically, but she can't stop Shay from leaving. So Shay's like, I'm running away. Do you want to come with me? Tally's like, no thanks. So Shay's like, okay, if you change your mind, I'm going to leave you these directions to get to me that only you would understand. And you follow them, and you'll get to me safely. So Shay, Tally's like, okay. And Ta uh, Shay leaves. So basically what happens is the government comes after Tally and is like, we know there are people running away from the city and we know that you have these instructions but we don't understand what these things mean. So you're gonna have to lead us to them and we'll give you this little tracking device necklace thingy and when you get there you hit it and we'll know where you are, it'll send out signals and we'll come to you and we'll find the people. And if you don't, do what we want you to do you are not allowed to be pretty. So she goes and like a lot of stuff happens and I'm not going to spoil the ending but basically you find out that this surgery that makes you pretty what the, the, the society is actually doing is they're going in and not only changing your body but they're changing the way you think so that these people the reason why they're so non-prejudiced anymore is because they like dull their brains almost so that they can't think for themselves and um, they do it with the intention of you know preventing war but it's still wrong and um, I think that this story is a great idea but it's not original if anybody is a fan of the Twilight Zone you might remember an episode called number 12 looks just like you and I think that was like the last, in the last season of the Twilight Zone. And it's basically the story, basically the same story. And um, Scott Westerfield says that he doesn't remember, he says he remembers watching the episode as a kid, but he said, claims he didn't take the idea from it. Whatever that is. Um, basically, it's just the same story. Except the main character is more of like a shade like character, and the best friend is more like Tally. So the character viewpoint is switched, but it's the same story. So if you don't really feel like reading the book, watch that episode. You got it. Um, I think that this was a good idea. I don't think necessarily that it was executed well. I think that happens a lot when you have a man trying to write from a girl's viewpoint or even a, a woman trying to write from a man's standpoint or whatever it is, is um, because the gender difference, we think differently. So when I read this, I'm reading it and I'm thinking, that's not how a teenage girl thinks, talks. Like, I don't know, like, unless something drastically happens in the future where we, women start acting like boys, like, I feel like the characters are a little bit too, um, they had, I don't know, the, the thought, the way they think and the things they're kind of ashamed of and the things they, like, try to puff up about themselves. I felt like the girls were acting a little bit more like guys in that sense. 
which was kind of weird. Um, I also thought that, I don't know, it was a, I didn't think it was written that well. It was, it, the, the way that it was written was interesting. I didn't get bored with the story, but I felt like, um, I just don't really like it, books that are written in third person. Where it's like, you know, they did that, or they did that, instead of I did this, I did that which is first person. I like first person better because it gives you a more personal feeling to the story. It makes you feel closer to the characters. It makes you care about them more. It puts you in the main character's shoes more. So I like that better. Um, so that's another thing that was kind of, you know, about iffy about it. I also tried to read the second book in this series and I got bored. So I stopped. Uh, also, I don't really like Tally that much. So, it's just, it's a good idea, poorly executed. That's my diagnosis. Um, I would actually d recommend it though for people who are not really, really into reading and who don't read a lot of books, because I gave that to my friend Sarah who doesn't read ever, except for school, and she read it, like, in a day, like, she got really obsessed with it. I feel like for new readers, it's a good place to start. Um, I just didn't particularly like it for where I was, you know, I just didn't, yeah. It wasn't a bad book, but I've read better. So, that's Uglies by Scott Westerfield.